All right, YouTube, today we're talking about torque. And to do that, let's compare the linear motion, which we've seen before, of a block, to the rotational motion of something that can turn, like say a bolt. See, in the past, we've talked about how if you put a force on an object, it's going to tend to move or really accelerate in that direction. That's just Newton's second law. And much in the same way, if we put a torque on an object, it's going to cause it not to move in a straight line, but to rotate. But of course the question comes up, what exactly is a torque? How is a torque produced? And how is it both similar and dissimilar to something we've seen before? That is, linear force. So to get a better understanding of both the equations and concepts of torque, let's put a wrench on this bolt right here. See, if we were to put a force on the end of this wrench, it would cause the wrench and in turn the bolt to rotate. Or to put it another way, that force produces a torque on the bolt, which is going to cause it to rotate. Now, the way I've drawn this, this force acting up on the end of the wrench would make this whole wrench rotate counterclockwise. But if I was to push on the wrench in the opposite direction, it would make the wrench rotate clockwise. And so the first thing we can conclude is that the direction of force matters when trying to produce torque on a wrench. And to complicate things further, let's imagine we did something absolutely ridiculous and pulled on this wrench to the right or directly outward away from the bolt. In that case, the force wouldn't be causing the wrench to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. And as a result, it would be producing no torque on that bolt. And while this may be starting to feel kind of confusing, let's go one step further. And let's say we pushed on this wrench at some angle. See, because this force is at an angle, some of this force, or really you could say a component of the force, is acting much like this original force did, tangent or at a right angle to the wrench, causing the wrench to rotate counterclockwise. See, because this force is at an angle, we really want to break this force up into two components. The first being perpendicular to the wrench. I'll show this as just F with a little perpendicular symbol next to it. And then the second component being parallel to the wrench. Now going back to what we saw originally, a force which was perpendicular to the wrench caused this wrench to rotate. But a force which was parallel to the wrench didn't cause this bolt to rotate at all. It produced no torque. And the important takeaway there is that we can have a force acting at an angle on a wrench, but really it's only the component of force which is perpendicular to that wrench or lever that's going to produce torque. Now there's more to torque than just force. You see, the length of a lever, in this case the length of the wrench, matters. And you'll see this sometimes referred to as length, other times as radius. But that radius is measured from the center of rotation, in this case the middle of the bolt, to wherever the force is being applied, in this case the end of the wrench. And that radius is what people typically refer to or think of as leverage. And that's why wrenches aren't all the same size. I mean, if you have a big bolt and you need to produce a lot of torque, you want a long wrench because it has lots of leverage. A small wrench is only going to produce a little bit of torque. And the reality is, when it comes to torque, I don't care what anybody else told you, size matters. So it's by combining force and radius that we can generate an equation for torque. Given by the Greek letter tau, torque is equal to radius multiplied by a force times the sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the radius and force vectors. And this leads us up to units. Torque is given by a radius, which is measured in meters, multiplied by a force, which is measured in newtons. And in physics, that's all well and good. For you engineers out there, you'll typically see this referred to as a newton meter. And this might feel familiar. You've seen newton meters before when you had a force multiplied by a displacement. But do not confuse this with the units of work or joules. Now going back over here to our block and Newton's second law. Know that the sum of all forces equals ma. Now if we have multiple forces acting on an object, 
It's the sum of those forces which causes the mass to accelerate. Which is why when dealing with linear motion, we always were establishing a positive direction anytime something was moving around. Which in the case of our block here, means this force 2 is in the negative direction. But the cool thing is, we can apply Newton's law to torque. You see, when applied in a circle, Newton's second law says that the sum of all torques is equal to something called the rotational moment of inertia times the angular acceleration of the object. And we'll talk more later on about the moment of inertia as well as the angular acceleration of an object. But the key takeaway of this is I want you to realize that just like a linear force caused an object to accelerate in a line, an unbalanced torque will cause an object to accelerate in a circle. Now when applying Newton's second law in a straight line, we had to establish a positive direction, typically to the right. And just in the same way, when applying Newton's second law in a circle, we again have to establish a positive direction. The issue is, right and left, or up and down, really don't apply here. So instead, we say the positive direction is counterclockwise. So any force or torque which is causing some object to rotate counterclockwise, we say is positive. And any force which is trying to make something rotate clockwise, we say is acting in the negative direction. Now where that comes from goes back to something called cross products in linear algebra, which I don't want to get into today. That's an issue for another day. The important takeaway though is that we still have both positive and negative directions when dealing with torque. Now stick around and I'll show you how to apply both this equation for torque as well as Newton's second law in a circle. But this has been the torque equation. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.